Cat, it's Maximus here. Don't do many videos about these kind of uh, vintage home utility grade drills just because they weren't great. I certainly have had plenty of people and viewers mention over time I've, I've had my channel that they think, you know, the old metal drills or were great. A vast majority of the old all metal drills were simply homeowners grade. They were pretty expensive. And the professional versions, like nice Milwaukee's, the reason old Milwaukee's don't turn up that often is because they were really expensive and people just weren't going to spend the equivalent of $150, $200 on a quarter drill back in the 50s, 60s, 70s. I suspect this Powercraft is somewhere between the 60s and 70s. This is, of course, a Montgomery Ward product. It even says Montgomery Ward right there. They did stamp. Kind of an expensive stamping right there, the stats. This is a home utility grade drill. It's only 2.2 amps. We can see how the chuck or the spindle really moves back and forth a lot. And the fact that there's quite a bit of resistance uh, just turning the spindle that it's going to be a sleeve bearing drill. This is a Jacobs Multicraft chuck, which is one of the, which was Jacobs budget versions. They were, this was not like, uh, you know, a 2BA or something like that, where it was one of the industrial chucks. This is a decent, you know, all steel chuck, but it, nonetheless, it's a multi-craft, which is just, uh, they just weren't built to quite the same tolerances. I think they may have had a different heat treatment or a different uh, alloy steel on them. But a lot of people uh, bought, when they bought an electric drill for home, were literally just, you know, homeowners, basic use, and they weren't going to spend a ton of money. A lot of the old Black & Deckers that I've seen, Commons, all these different brands of metal drills are just homeowner grade. They're not all ball bearing or ball needle bearing, heavy duty, uh, professional grade drills. And that's why I just don't pick up very many of them. The reason I did pick up this Powercraft, and you know, it's one of the reasons I don't talk about much on the channel, but the reason I did pick up this Powercraft is for a couple. One, just to show that mid-grip drills aren't anything new, you know, more than half a century ago, <laughs> midship drills are around. Another thing I thought was interesting, and why I think it's from the 70s, is basically we have like a plastic cover here. The way this cord is set up is it is more plasticky. We even have a plastic key retainer there. This little window here is very odd. It's like a storage area in the handle. It's so... I don't, you know, you put like some little driver bits or something in there. This drill does not have a reverse. It does have a locking button that protrudes half a mile from the side of the drill. Super easy, super easy to get this thing to engage. And it has so little power, I wouldn't really worry about it accidentally getting locked on. Plenty of ventilation here. Kind of has like a jet engine exhaust or jet engine intake style right there. And the ergonomics of this drill are actually pretty neat. So that's really why I picked it up, I thought. As far as all the homeowner grade drills, this one actually has uh, just quite a uh, kind of a interesting industrial design and really good ergonomics. Unfortunately, it's just super weak. I'm not even, I'll do a couple drill tests, but I'm not gonna compare this to the Milwaukee's or anything like that. It'll just, get, <laughs> it'll get punished. Just super basic. I'm gonna use a rag so I don't get burned up by the chuck. But just to show you, I can almost completely stall it out, just grab it onto the chuck with my bare hands. One other aspect of the industrial design that I thought was interesting is if we look, you can see how the vents they have like a taper. And so the fan hits that and actually causes the air to go out at an angle. And what I mean by that, if I take the rag here, looks like there's no air. But if I go over here, it does. No air. And so what's doing is it's causing the air to actually blow out at an angle like this instead of straight up the side of the drill really making sure that you don't get dust in your face. And I actually thought, uh, that's kind of smart. I don't know why a lot of other moder modern tools don't have fan designs like that, because it certainly makes a whole lot of sense to have the air blow more forward, 
may help clean up the area that blow our uh, dust and sawdust and that type of stuff out of the area that you're drilling, as well as making it less likely that you get dust and stuff blown into your face. The only thing I will mention about sleeve bearings is now that it's gotten warmed up, you can just see how much that moves in and out. That's the easiest way to tell. Some ball bearing based drills will have like a little bit of motion, but not this much. This is like the dead giveaway, the sleeve bearings. The one thing about sleeve bearings is they are tight. So this is not going to have a bunch of lateral play. It'll just have a lot of end play. And then you can tell they have a lot of resistance. They have a lot more friction and they're just cheaper to do. I'm sure this entire drills all sleeve bearing, but let's do a quick drill test here. I was initially going to try a one inch spade bit, but I realized that was just going to punish this drill. That was probably the worst part about this drill is that a sleeve bearing 2.2 amp 1000 RPM drill is really, it's surprisingly weak. Um, so I'm just using a half inch spade bit because that's about all this thing can handle. You could hear this thing was just really bogging down, having a hard time with that. Uh, you could probably do five eighths, three quarters, but you would have to really go lightly, really peck at it. Um, it would be slow going. One inch would be just basically too much. Just for giggles, this is the uh, one of the most coveted of Milwaukee's three eighths drills. This is the O triple deuce, O triple two dash one. 1,000 RPM, just like that um, <laughs> Montgomery Ward, 3.5 amps, so only 1.3 amps more power on paper. That's the only difference, besides the fact this is all ball and needle bearing, heavy-duty Milwaukee. This has a uh, Jacobs 2BA chuck, which is uh, a half-inch chuck that's actually been machined to 3 eighths and has a huge amount of steel. And so on paper... There should be almost no difference. Well, it wouldn't be no difference. It would be about 50% of the power. But it, this thing, uh, it's way more, it's delivering probably twice the power simply because of the build quality of motor and all ball and needle bearings. <laughs> I was pressing hard to drill the hole that fast, and it barely slowed down just a little bit, and I didn't even peck. I let all the chips build up around the end of the bit. <laughs> That's what I mean. Paper specs don't always quite mean everything. Now I'll take this apart. Now there isn't to say there weren't Montgomery Ward uh, heavy-duty Powercraft drills. There were. This just happened to be a homeowner grade, and... In the spirit of Montgomery Ward trying to set themselves apart, like from Sears and even J.C. Penney, was that their tools, for a given price point and intended purpose, like a homeowner's 3H drill, did tend to be a little bit nicer than others. The industrial design of this drill is one of the one of the very few of these old metal um, home <laughs> home utility grade drills that I will keep because midship grip. Just super ergonomics with a little recess there. Nice rounding on the grip. Nice kind of bulbous there. The fact that they don't have the power wire going through the grip just allowed them to... I mean, these ergonomics uh, are as good as anything made today. That's for sure. Anyway, let's go ahead and knock out these... Uh, what do we got? Six screws in here? Come on now. We'll take a look inside. A lot of these screws do have some damage, so somebody was either inside or was tightening up the screws. And now we get to work the clamshell apart.
there's our little lever there. Some pretty old yucky grease in there, that's for sure. Quick analysis inside. Not a high speed motor. We can see the wide contacts. So this motor, as you can hear, just doesn't spin very fast. It's probably a 10,000 RPM motor as opposed to 12, 15, 18,000. We got some kind of rubber bits here to re reduce the field from uh, vibrating around so much. Even though this is made in the 70s, it's still using pinch contacts. But we can see that they did use some varnish, a little bit of epoxy to try to hold the wires on. Bakelite brush guides, which look just like they are in the Black & Decker. It's even a sleeve bearing in the back of the motor. So what they have is a wave washer in the front. We can see this fan is unbelievably close to the field right there. That is actually, as a matter of fact, look at that. That's crazy how close the fan is. Uh, if you get any debris in there, it's going to hit the fans going to hit it into the field. So which isn't very good. We also have some gear alignment issues. You can see that there should have been some kind of thrust washer in here. Maybe there was because this has been opened up before, so maybe it had been tampered, but this gear should be pushed back like that. And we can see it can slide forward, and so the spindle is even making full engagement with that gear, which is disappointing. So I probably won't end up keeping this drill just because for those reasons. Double reduction. One thing I will mention, as you can see, at least they did helical cut the first stage. Since that's the highest speed, it's going to generate the most noise. So it explains why it was running a little bit uh, more quietly. As far as the sleeve bearings, it's actually just a piece of steel that's in here. A steel block there, a steel block for the front of the reduction gear, and then this part of the spindle just runs through uh, the aluminum housing. Some other nice points, we can see a boss there and one up there, so that way when you put take the case on and off, and you can see a hole there and a hole right there, that way the case gets aligned. Even though the gears are actually held in place by these blocks on this half of it, it still is nice because you can take it apart or open up the case, put it back on, and it'll maintain its perfect alignment. And so one of the, that is a nice attention to detail because it means that when they manufacture it, they take both the case halves, put them together, and then they polish the outside edge so you don't feel any ridge. And when you take it apart and put it back together, it's not like there might be a slight uh, misalignment where you would end up feeling a sharp edge. It'll feel the same way uh, when you put it back together as it was before. There's actually a third one down here. Anyway, that's my little video about this old Montgomery Ward's Powercraft uh, home utility grade drill. This was, they basically compete with Black & Decker's. And I think it was actually kind of elegant. It has a decent industrial design. And unlike the Black & Decker's, at least the home utility grade ones, it did have helical cut first stage gears. So they had like just a couple of things that set it apart. Just a slightly more compact uh, housing, first stage helical cut gears, and maybe a slightly better chuck than the Black & Decker's really good ergonomics because the Black & Decker's of the 60s and 70s, um, 50s and 60s and 70s, didn't quite have as good of ergonomics as this drill. This drill has really good ergonomics. Anyway, really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.